San Antonio starts right now. Look at the North, North Tower. Tower quickly, seems quickly. to be coming down. Never forget, today the nation pauses to remember the lives lost on 9-11, today marking 23 years since the hijacked plane attacks killed nearly 3,000 people. We'll take you to the ceremonies happening this morning right here in the Alamo City. And we're recapping the presidential debate last night between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Tonight, you're going to hear from the same old tired playbook, a bunch of lies, grievances, and name calling. She's a Marxist. Everybody knows she's a Marxist. We have local reaction as well as new national political endorsements this morning, including one from music superstar Taylor Swift. And she lost her husband in a vicious dog attack. And the first time, for the first time, Jamie Nahara is sitting down for an interview with KSAT 12, where the punishment phase in that trial stands on this Wednesday morning. And good morning to everyone out there. It is Wednesday, September 11th. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Let's check in with Justin right now to see if any rain chances are in our forecast. Unfortunately, it looks like it's going to be a pretty dry forecast. We've got a lot of warm temperatures on the way for those kiddos that are headed to the bus stop this morning. It's warmer. We've got temperatures in the mid 70s. Now we may see those numbers drop off a little bit more, but certainly not jacket weather this morning. Then we end up around 91 this afternoon, partly cloudy skies and we're starting to see humidity make a return too. So that's why it's going to get more summer like as we finish out the week. Let's go outside for you right now. 76 here in San Antonio. Converse is at 75, Bernie 72, Kerrville the cool spot at 65 uh, with a northeasterly wind around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's the latest on Hurricane Francine. This is the 4 a.m. update. It's category one storm. Winds are at 90 miles per hour. It's moving northeast at 10. So it's starting to pick up speed. This is forecast to make landfall later this afternoon in Louisiana. Some pretty significant storm surge there too. We'll take a closer look at the path and uh, we'll talk more about this heat. Maybe some records potentially by Friday. More on that in a bit. Let's get over to RJ now and see how the roads are looking this morning. All right, Justin. Yes, people getting out about five o'clock in the morning here. Hopefully you guys are off to a good start on your Wednesday morning. Taking a look at some construction taking place there. That's going to be 10 at the Y, the downtown area, upper levels as they do the uh, bridge work in that area. 3537 outside of the downtown area traffic moving along there. 37 at South End Road. Same situation there as well. So we are seeing a lot of construction on this Wednesday morning so if you're about to step outside keep this in mind we have construction going on at 90 west at nogalitos also construction loop 410 eastbound at harry wurzbach road and 1604 at john peace boulevard out there on the far northwest side of town so just keep that in mind if you're about to step outside on your wednesday morning jaffney well, it was a scene so brutal and bloody that we couldn't even show everything on camera. But it's a moment that Janie Najeda lives out every single day. She lost her husband, Ramon, in this dog attack. And for the first time, she's sitting down for an interview with our own Steve Spreester. Now, Janie was also severely injured when two dogs jumped a neighbor's fence and shattered her life forever. One of those dogs attacked her first, then her husband stepped in to save her. Now, with her family sitting behind her for support, she takes us through what happened next and why she thinks that the city deserves some of the blame. I feel like there has to be justice done for my husband, you know. He didn't deserve to die like that. He was a good person. He just couldn't get him off of him. And he kept on screaming, and he was calling out to me, and he kept on saying, Janie, Janie, I can't get the dog off of me. And I was screaming to see if somebody could hear us, you know. So the dog came back to my husband, and he started dragging him. He's dragging him towards his side, where he lived, where the dog lived. So he dragged him halfway, and during the time that he dragged him halfway, the female dog got out. And I said, she is going to finish me up, you know. That's what came through my head. And I started praying. I prayed. I said, Jesus, the holy blood of Jesus covered me with his holy blood. And the dog just walked away. I mean, that was a miracle. And then she went and attacked my husband. And she's the one that pulled the, the dialysis line out. And I could hear my husband screaming. But I am 
I'm thankful that the fire department got there. My husband is my hero because he saved my life, but the fire department, they're my heroes too because if they hadn't gotten there, I think the dogs would have finished me up too. You have emotional and physical wounds. I do, I do. Will those ever heal? No, they won't. Not the emotional because I live through it every day, this tragedy, you know. Even in my quiet time, my mind just wanders off, you know, and I think about him, how he was hurting so bad, you know. And there was no policemen that came. I kept on saying, well, where were the policemen? They have guns. They could have used the guns on those dogs. But I'm just thankful that the fire department came to my rescue. And I even went to the uh, fire station, and I met them all. And, um, and I thanked them. And I thanked them from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> I was so thankful. Yeah, some very emotional interview there. Janie was taken to the hospital in critical condition with dog bites on her legs. Those wounds became infected, and she would undergo wound care at BAMC. She and her family have filed a federal lawsuit against the city of San Antonio. So the city admits that there were numerous complaints about these dogs, and they had attacked other people. They even admitted that the dogs had been removed and quarantined by animal care services, only to be returned to their owners. Janie believes that if animal care services had done their job, these dogs would have been put down months before the attack and her husband would still be alive. Meanwhile, later this morning, it is day three of the punishment phase for the couple at the center of that deadly dog attack. That trial, that punishment phase is going to resume. Yesterday, Janie now had a tearfully testified to the court as well as Animal Care Services Lieutenant Bethany Snowden. She explained at the time of the deadly attack of Ramon Najera in 2023, ACS only had four bite investigators on staff for the entire city. She also explained how the previous bites weren't considered serious and it was a different dog involved in each attack. When asked during cross-examination about giving previous victims information about filling out an affidavit to deem the dogs dangerous, there wasn't a clear response. Did David Adela guess could get a notice? I'm sorry, I don't have the answer for you. Would it surprise you to know Mr. Adela testified under oath that he had reached out to ACS several times asking how he could get these dogs off the street? I don't have any knowledge to that. Well, the Nahara family has filed a lawsuit against the city about not doing enough before the deadly attack. Testimony will resume later this morning. We are live streaming this full punishment phase, and you can watch all of this live on all of our platforms on KSAT 12. Last night was the first and what could be the last presidential debate between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. ABC News hosted the debate in what is a close race between the two in the very important electoral state of Pennsylvania. And the debate had a little bit of everything. Personal attacks, partisan divide, a pledge for unity, and claims about Haitian migrants eating pets. Trump repeatedly, though, brought the wide-ranging conversation back to immigration. She was the border czar. She doesn't want to be called the border czar because she's embarrassed by the border. It's time to turn the page. And if that was a bridge too far for you, well, there is a place in our campaign for you to stand for country, to stand for our democracy, to stand for rule of law, and to end the chaos. In the end, the Harris campaign felt that she successfully won the debate fair and square, while the Trump campaign criticized both her and the moderators, saying that it was a three against one debate with Trump being fact checked throughout the debate versus Harris not being fact checked, despite making some false claims as well. At this time, the Harris campaign, though quick to offer another debate in October, Trump has not yet committed. Lots of people here in San Antonio have different thoughts about how it went. Is there anything that you've heard so far in the debate that you wish that either of the candidates expanded on more? Abortion. I think that they need to expand on abortion more. So you're a Kamala supporter. Is there anything that you feel like she's missing during tonight's debate? Well, my biggest thing when it comes to Democrats is I'm a native Texan, is that we, we are not great when we talk about the southern border. Be courageous to talk about the border and what you're going to do about it. 
Now, as far as national reaction goes, the Harris campaign says that they were surprised to hear about an endorsement it received after, after the debate from Taylor Swift, who called Harris a steady-handed, gifted leader. Meanwhile, in the spin room after that debate, the Trump campaign invited Tulsi Gabbard, the former Democrat and Hawaii Congresswoman, and Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who endorsed Trump after suspending his independent campaign. A live look this morning at New York City, the site of those horrific terror attacks that happened 23 years ago. Today, in cities and towns across the country, Americans will be attending remembrance ceremonies and sharing their stories of that day. Of course, that includes here in San Antonio. We've got a live look right here at a special light tribute. You can see the two beams of light memorializing the Twin Towers at Methodist Hospital downtown right now. This morning, first responders and others in our community will commemorate this day by climbing the stairs of Towers of America. Our Patty Santos is live there this morning as they get ready to do that climb to honor all of those first responders. Patty? Hey there, good morning. Then the climb starts just shortly before nine this morning, but already here on the grounds are over 200 volunteers, I would say, trying to set up things. You're joining me right now is the Chavano Park Fire Chief Daryl Dover. Tell me about the significance of this climb. So we here, we're here today to, to pay tribute to all the lives lost on 9-11. Uh, so we climb on behalf of the, the 343 firefighters, the law enforcement officers that were lost, the EMS personnel, as well as the civilians. So um, we are the SA-110 Memorial Stair Climb. So the purpose behind us in our motto is we climb because they climb. So uh, as we start our journey this morning, uh, the firefighters will actually climb the, uh, the tower twice to uh, get the 110 stories in. So the purpose and the thought behind it is we're paying tribute to complete that climb that they were unable to finish that day. So uh, once we're complete uh, and we finish everything, there's a little ceremony, it's very solemn, but we're just here, you know, we're privileged to be here to pay our respects and to, to carry that honor and, and that tradition and finish that climb for all those lost. Thank you so much. I know this is a, a difficult event to put on. It's not easy. If, if you were alive when that happened, it impacted everyone it changed uh, our nation really so thank you so much for continuing to 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 keep this memory alive for them we're going to stay here and we're going to bring you more coming up in the next hour we'll send it back to you all right thank you patty and several other places around town are also hosting 9-11 remembrance ceremonies today including special events at saint mary's university san antonio college and more of course, we got that comprehensive list where you can participate in the ceremony near you. Just look for the story on KSAT.com or the KSAT News app. Yeah, definitely a lot of people are going to be honoring those victims and, of course, those first responders today. Well, 512 right now, 76 degrees outside. Switching gears real quick. Someone in Texas, very lucky person. They're waking up a multi-millionaire after winning the Mega Millions jackpot last night. I'm going to tell you where that winning ticket was sold. Yeah, very interesting story. And what San Antonio Spurs fans need to know about some fancy new food options that are coming to the Frostbank Center. We'll talk about that in just a bit. Taking a live look out at the city right now on your Wednesday. Obviously, we have a jam-packed day of news today. And of course, the forecast information coming from Justin Horn. We got all that good stuff coming your way after this. Welcome back. It's 516 in your morning headlines. Tens of thousands of people are under wildfire evacuation orders and warnings in the western part of the U.S. today. Officials say that the, that the country now has more than 70 large active fires out there in Orange County, California. The airport fire is expanding rapidly after igniting on Monday. About 1,400 area homes are under evacuation orders. Meanwhile, the line fire is behind 4,800 home evacuations in San Bernardino County. All right, check this out. You better call your relatives if they live near Houston because according to the Texas Lottery, someone in Sugarland won the Mega Millions jackpot worth just an estimated $800 million. So that ticket was the oh, only one that <laughs> matched all the numbers in last night's drawing. And the lucky winner could walk away with the cash option of, get this, RJ, just a little $404 million. That. That, yeah. yeah, so again, this is the only third, the uh, the only or only the third Mega Millions Millions winner of the whole entire year. So again, it's mm. hey man, that person is going to be a very happy camper when they wake <laughs> up. I wonder if they already have seen it and just are just yeah. like, I'm just yeah. going to go to sleep on this and wake mm -hmm. up in the morning and make yeah. sure I'm not. Well, dreaming. that's what I was hoping. Yeah. I was hoping we would wake up in 
and be Mega Millions uh, winners. But uh, yeah, I was like, do I have any long lost uh, third, fourth cousins out there, Sugarland? <laughs> oh my, my God. Houston peeps. <laughs> well, hey, good luck. Well, congratulations. I will say yeah. that. All right, guys, it's 517 right now. We got 76 degrees outside. All right, Spurs fans, listen up. You're going to have a few more options, some tasty options this season, thanks to a great new culinary program. We're going to tell you how the Spurs culinary program is bringing a lot of new flavor to the NBA. We're taking a look outside. Trans guide, obviously, everybody's looking good. If you stay on the roads, please be safe. Of course, we're going to keep you updated throughout the morning, trying to figure out what your commute is looking like. All right, 520 right now on your Wednesday morning. Hopefully you guys are off to a good start to your day. 410 at Babcock, traffic looking pretty good in both directions there. 410, Perrin Vital, same situation there as well. We are still seeing a lot of overnight construction, kind of the middle of the week, trying to get a lot of that construction done before we get to the weekend. Taking a look at 90 westbound Nogalito Street. Uh, we do have some closures there. 410 eastbound at Harry Wurzbach Road, same situation there as well. As we take one more look here at the upper levels of the downtown area at I-10, and then 35 right there. You saw a little bit of those lights there, Jaffney, with some of that traffic and that construction going on there. Hey, we do have one of those cameras out there at the Frostbank Center. Yeah. So interesting here. Foodies, check this out. This is something else for Spurs fans to look forward to. The Spurs Culinary Program announced 12 new local restaurants. We didn't ask them for that number, okay? That's the, they came up with that themselves. Mm. That are coming to the Frostbank Center for this upcoming NBA season. We got everything from sushi oh. to fun, sweet treats. Look <laughs> I like Japanese reaction. Wait. You will be able to get a little taste of everything. And this is stuff that you eat at, 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 like at a the arena, yes. Oh, They're my selling Lord. Their okay, games. so yeah. the restaurants were picked by the Spurs Sports and Entertainment at Aaron, Mac, Aaron Mark, excuse me. And the last spot was voted by a public on the Purple Pig Barbecue. Now you will see the new tacos, Korean hot dogs, and donuts this upcoming season at the concession stands. That is. That's, cr I, hey, I am a fan. <laughs> yeah, so they switched gear a few years back. They decided to go with, uh, instead of the chain stuff, they yeah. started to go with more of the local vendors and local small business restaurants and stuff. So I like that's, it. So those are the 12 new restaurants that'll be genius. there for Wemby year two. Man, I'm telling you, we get some sushi mm. instead of a nacho. Oh my gosh, that is. Don't get me wrong. I can still eat some of that arena, yeah. old school yeah, arena. Yeah, yeah. But that. that looks really good, uh, and I agree with you. I like the local business mm -hmm. aspect yep. of it. That's pretty cool. Hey, we got a trivia question for you guys this morning. We want to ask the audience at home, too, see if you know. Now, don't Google it. That's what we say. Don't Google it because this is easily Googleable. But which state has seen the most land falling hurricanes since records have been kept? And this roughly goes back to the 1800s. So is it Texas, mm. Louisiana? Florida or North Carolina? This is a good Don't one. render a guess yet. It's a good one. Let okay. it marinate. Okay. Think about yeah. it. I'm in a battle with two of them already. Okay. Me so. too. So which state has the most land falling hurricanes? Justin's a trickster, so I don't know. I, he I like can sometimes uh, off a little bit. Uh, we'll reveal the answer coming up around 6.30 or 6.40ish a little bit later this morning. All right, let's, uh, speaking of hurricanes, talk about Francine. Uh, Category 1 hurricane, this is a 4 a.m. update. Winds are at 90 miles per hour. And uh, you can see we've got thunderstorm activity around the center, but... It is a little lopsided, so I think this is taking on some shear. And I think the big question becomes here, can this strengthen to, say, a Category 2 hurricane before it makes landfall? Does it really matter? Uh, honestly, no, uh, because you're talking about the difference of, you know, 10-mile-per-hour uh, winds here, uh, 10 to 20-mile-per-hour winds. Either way, my, the, the bottom line here is what I'm trying to say is that this is going to be a hurricane that uh, can do some damage. And uh, yes, the Hurricane Center now thinks this could be a Category 2 hurricane with winds near 100 miles per hour before it makes landfall. And that's going to be later this afternoon and this evening on the middle of Louisiana coast. Now, this is a really low-lying area. These parishes are basically at sea level. And so when you get the storm surge with this, it's going to be pretty significant, uh, perhaps all the way up to near Baton Rouge. And Louisiana needs to, or not Louisiana, New Orleans needs to keep a close eye on this too as uh, this comes in from the uh, south and west. Now, we'll weaken pretty rapidly once it moves north along the Mississippi River, but it will bring heavy rain as it does uh, places like Memphis and Little Rock uh, through the weekend. Uh, tomorrow and Friday and then into the weekend. Uh, here's a look at some of the storm surge. And right now, Hurricane Center thinks we're talking about 5 to 10 feet, uh, roughly from just south of Lafayette to uh, near New Orleans. And that's where you're going to get some of that inundation with the, uh, the big storm surge in the water that's coming in with this rather large storm.
That's the latest on Francine. Of course, we are seeing almost no impact. We had some clouds yesterday, and that's about the end of it. 76 right now, 76 in New Braunfels, 75 in Converse, 65 in Kerrville. It is warmer this morning, and uh, we'll have some clouds this afternoon. We'll call it partly cloudy, uh, noontime 86, and then we make our way up to around 90. 293 this afternoon, uh, so it will be a warm day. Uh, here's the look at the future cast in long term forecast. Uh, that uh, storm system, as we said, moves north, but I'm going to watch some tropical moisture coming in from the Pacific this time, not the Atlantic, but the Pacific that could impact us early next week. Now, it's not a lot of moisture, and I think that the lift is going to be not so great, uh, but it is there. And so we'll put in some small rain chances Sunday into Monday, and that's about all we can offer you rain-wise in this extended forecast. The other big story will be the heat, 97 on Friday. The record, by the way, is 100, so we are within range of that record. The heat index certainly will be over 100. So as we've been saying, Friday Night Football will be toasty. Mm. It's okay because get, I'm, I'm telling you, we ain't far from the cold attempt. So I'm just like, go ahead, hit us with your best shot. Yeah, yeah fall, fall officially begins the yeah. 22nd. Yeah. yeah. So it's not far away, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, we're going to have to suffer through a little more summer first. Yeah. We are, right. We, we can were spoiled it. a little bit with some good Friday night weather. So you know what? Gonna, yeah, we'll take this this Friday if we got to go. Yeah. Do it. 526 <laughs> right now, 76 degrees outside. All right, speaking of football, this week's PGC Game of the Week features a unique matchup to say the least. Up next, how players from John Jay and South San Schools 13 miles apart are getting ready for the action this weekend. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. Well, this week's BGC Game of the Week features a showdown between two unbeaten teams in the new 5A district that are only 13 miles apart. We're talking about the John Jay Mustangs taking on them Bobcats from South San Antonio. The new district rivals are a perfect 2-0 to start the season. John Jay was bumped down to 5A after a long playoff run as a 6A team last season. Both teams are getting ready for a fun one on Friday night. This past Friday was crazy. You know, it was an electric uh, crowd. You know, and uh, we broke a record with attendance. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be lit. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna do our thing. We're gonna lock it mentally and physically, and you know all that stuff. It's gonna be an amazing atmosphere. Um, I can't wait. I mean, it's very pointed to um, our team. Two and zero. It's a big deal. A lot of motivation um, heading on to this week. We're both going in for the same goal. You know, it's gonna be an intense atmosphere. We're just gonna be dogs and see who comes out. South San and John Jay kick off at 7.30 p.m. this Friday night. And we, of course, will have all the highlights and post game later that evening right here on KSAT 12. You can also read a full preview of this game on KSAT.com slash sports. All right, it's 5.30 right now, 76 degrees outside. We're well, live at the Tower of Americas this morning. First responders taking time to remember the events of September the 11th, 23 years ago. How you can be a part of the ceremonies today. And ahead at 6 o'clock, a local man who stepped in to help a stranger is being called a hero. How he sprang into action to help a woman whose daughter was towed away with her car. San Antonio will never forget. We'll take you to a special September 11th remembrance ceremony unique to the Alamo City. And we'll tell you about one of San Antonio's connections to 9-11. The story of U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Karen Wagner, who graduated from Justin High School in 1979. Plus what the Bear County Sheriff is saying this morning about another 12-year-old student that was arrested for making a terroristic threat. And good morning. It is now 5.33, of course, on our Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yes, so obviously, Justin, a lot of people are going to be watching uh, the weather, kind of paying attention to what happens this weekend, but also the things out in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, Francine, a hurricane now, and it is going to make landfall later today in Louisiana. It will have no effect on our forecast, though, at all. And really, the big story for us is going to be heat going forward. Uh, today, 93, but it only gets hotter from there. Uh, this morning, temperatures in the 70s. Uh, right now, we're at 76. We're hoping we fall a few more degrees before it's all said and done, but certainly warmer this morning than it has been last few mornings. 80 at 10 o'clock, 89, 1 o'clock, 92 at 4 p.m. And again, we top out at 93. It'll be a partly cloudy day. Uh, and as we look at water vapor imagery, which again shows us the moisture in the atmosphere, still pretty dry, at least in the mid levels here across uh, Texas. All the moisture is with Francine, and that is making a beeline towards Louisiana. 
uh, and will be there this afternoon. That's where all the rain will be today. Even Houston, by and large, missing out on rainfall from this system. Now we transition into the heat 95 by Thursday, 97 on Friday. I think Friday and Saturday will be our hottest days and heat indices because humidity does make a return will be up near 100. So we want to caution you a summer is not, <laughs> not done yet. I uh, definitely it will have an impact on us Friday and Saturday. RJ. All right, Justin, thank you very much for that. Taking a look at your traffic authority on this Wednesday morning. Good morning to everyone that's maybe getting up right now. Maybe thinking about hitting the roads anytime soon here. 37 I-10 traffic link pretty good. Good shot there of the Tower of the Americas, the San Antonio skyline. Just saw that shot there. That's going to be 90 at Nogalitos, and that's going to be the westbound lanes. We do have some ongoing construction in that area out there. So something we will continue to monitor as we make our th way through your Wednesday morning. But we are moving on to other news now and of course today is the 9 11 and we're taking a live look right now at ground zero in new york city this of course the site of those terror attacks that happened 23 years ago today in cities across the country americans will be attending remembrance ceremonies and of course san antonio is doing its part to honor those impacted by those attacks our patty santos is at the san antonio 9 11 memorial climb good morning Aunt patty Hey there, good morning. And I know you mentioned San Antonio, but this really attracts people from all over South and Central Texas. And here, even people coming in from out of state to be a part of this climb. I want to show you this scene. There are hundreds of volunteers out there right now. And even some of the volunteers are so of some of the firefighters here in the Let me go ahead and of course, all of this set up right now by volunteers right on this side who have the space really start the event at 8 a.m. this morning. So, this is going to be uh, rang in honor of those that were killed. Uh, the event starts right here. This is what they're going to do. They're going to actually start here in the line and form and start going up. They're going to go all the way to the top of the tower and come and come back uh, to do it a second time. This is 110 floors, the representation of the 110 floors uh, that these firefighters climb. We're going to have more from the organizers and the committee and how you can be a part of this. Maybe not this year, but maybe next year. And then we can come and send it back to you. All right. Yeah, can clearly a little bit of uh, uh, some audio issues there as we get a lot of people there at the Tower of the Americas this morning. We'll check back in with Patty in just a little bit. But one of San Antonio's connections to 9-11 is the story of U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Karen Wagner. Wagner graduated from Judson High School in 1979. She was a popular student and star athlete for the Rockets, but also well known in the community as someone who was always willing to help those in need. Wagner went to UNLV and became a distinguished military graduate, then earned her master's degree in health services administration. She was then commissioned as a Medical Service Corps officer and in the summer of 2001 promoted to rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Wagner was in the Pentagon when one of the hijacked planes crashed into that building. She died trying to save the lives of others there in the building. In 2021, I got the chance to speak with teachers at Wagner High School that were impacted by her sacrifice. She died trying to help some people escape the fires at the Pentagon. It's a tragedy that we lost her. Um, and at the same time, that was possibly part of the impetus for me to enlist in the military as well. Well, in 2003, the Wagner Sports Center at Walter Reed was named in her honor. And a year later, Judson ISD named its second school in her honor as well. I always look at that picture of her and I said, I got you because I want our kids to embrace um, what it is to be strong and to be able to have persevere of all types of um, situations. Judson ISD will remember and honor the life and sacrifice of Lieutenant Colonel Wagner this morning as it marks 20 years since that school opened on the east side of town in the Converse area. The ceremony will include a wreath display, remembrances of Wagner's contributions as a student and soldier, and end with the plane of the taps and a moment of silence. And this all starts at 9 o'clock this morning. 
This morning, another 12 year old student arrested for making a terroristic threat. The Bear County Sheriff's Office arrested the 12 year old yesterday afternoon at a home in West Bear County. According to BCSO, they received a tip from Northside ISD after an outcry witness said a student made a verbal threat during a FaceTime call this past Saturday, saying that they were going to shoot up Luna Middle School and allegedly showed pictures of guns. School officials immediately notified authorities and suspended the student from school pending the arrest and investigation. And yesterday afternoon, deputies arrested the student and again searched their home. They found a .38 caliber pistol with an extended magazine, ammunition, two fake pistols, and two different sets of plate carriers for body armor. The student was booked into the Bear County Juvenile Detention Center on a third degree felony charge of terroristic threats. This comes just a few days after a different 12 year old was arrested for also making school shooting threats to seven different San Antonio schools. Well, it is now 540 on your Wednesday morning, 76 degrees outside. Up next, why Campbell's wants to remove the soup title from its iconic soup cans. All right, Ken, so it's a very interesting story there. Taking a look at live cam across the city of San Antonio. Of course, a lot of remembrance is going to be taking place today for 9-11. We're going to check in with Justin to get an update on what your weather will look like for the rest of the day and also check in on some of those TransGuy traffic cameras. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It is 543. Monday is 16 de September, also known as Mexico's Independence Day in the city of San Antonio, kicking off the celebration this Friday. That's right. San Antonio has a long standing relationship with Mexico and Hispanic Heritage Month celebrates Mexico's independence each September with some special events. We, we feel very, very close to San Antonio. San Antonio feels very close to Mexico, particularly in this shared um, history and uh, traditions that we keep celebrating every year with uh, the same intensity and the same conviction and identity. Mexican Independence Day is again September 16th. Hispanic Heritage Month then kicks off the day before September 15th and runs through October 15th. All right, Andre, do you like Campbell's chicken soup? And all I do, yes. I grew up with a lot of these uh, OG <laughs> yeah. chicken soups. <laughs> now check this out. One of the country's most iconic brands plans to change its name. Campbell's Soup wants to drop the soup from its corporate moniker. The company has been around for 155 years, but leaders say that there's more to Campbell's than these days than just the soup, and soup is now a smaller part of the company's sales. So, wants to be known as, get this, the Campbell's company. Campbell's owns a variety of snacks and foods that include Goldfish, Pepperidge Farm, and Snyder's of Hanover. And on November, uh, it says shareholders will have the final say on whether the name change becomes official. So what do you think about that? Mm, I don't like it. Yeah. I mean, Campbell's <laughs> Soup, it reminds me, I think of that commercial with that little boy coming in and that when he's the snowman and yeah, he kind of yeah, like yeah, melts yes. with the soup. Yeah, I love that commercial. <laughs> love the nostalgia, but I, I get it, I guess. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't like it when Brit brands are changing their names yeah. and all that stuff yeah. too. But hey, I guess you gotta Give do what you gotta Campbell's do. Give me my Campbell's Soup. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, it is 545 right now, 76 degrees outside. We're taking you outside with a look at TransGuide 410 Starcrest. Traffic looking pretty good, 1604 Green Mountain Road. Same situation, again, just seen a lot of overnight construction. We do expect a lot more people to be hitting the roads as we get closer to our six o'clock hour. One more quick look at TransGuide and we'll check in with the man with the plan over there, Justin Horn, for today's forecast. Hey, bring it in, bring it in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the field run. Woo, woo, woo. All day light. Woo. Job life. Damn. All day life, all day life, all day life, all day life, all day, 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 Can your pad flex with you without shifting? Always Flex Foam can. It's the only pad made with a flexible foam core with wings that fit securely for up to zero bunching and zero leaks. Can your pad do that? See what foam can do for you.
550 right now. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. We're taking a look at some of our trans guy cameras. And before we went to break, let you guys know we did not see any major incidents, but we are starting to see a lot more traffic out in the roads there. Taking a look 35 southbound there. And OK, Justin just pointed something out to me. All right, this is going to be a pretty major incident out there. Thank you very much, Justin. We will continue to gather a little bit more information on what is going on. Is that the uh, airport camera? OK, that is the airport camera, right? Yes, Justin? that's okay, cool. uh, that's 410 at the airport. Oh, okay, man. 410 at the airport. So yeah, we'll get a little bit more. Fortunately, right now the rotating trans guide shots are not showing that as I think uh, we're trying to find that back in the booth, but we'll give you more updates here in just a little bit. All right, Justin, so we already know we got a lot of remembrance ceremonies going on for 9-11. Mm -hmm. uh, what can they be expecting as they get out and about today? It's, it's going to be warm. We're not expecting any rain, maybe a few clouds. It's going to look a lot like yesterday. We were in the low 90s, and that's probably where we end up again this afternoon. So just know it's going to be a little toasty in this morning. Temperatures are still in the mid-70s. So we had some cool mornings, not so much anymore. And one more quick check. That's the live cam. So we're with uh, looking with airport came here and that is the eastbound lanes of 410 there. Looks like we do have an incident and RJ's working on gathering more information for us. 76 degrees at the airport, 76 New Braunfels, 75 Converse, 70 right now in Bernie and 65 in Kerrville. Dew point trend. So this is going to play a big role as we go forward. Dew points are still not horrible this morning, uh, but they start to drop down. Uh, a little bit tomorrow, but then they build back up on Friday. We're back in the muggy territory and Friday's a day I'm worried about because not only is it going to be hot, it is going to be fairly humid. So the heat index will play a role. And then by Saturday, dew points drop back again. So a lot of ups and downs here with the dew points. And then I think much of next week we'll have some fairly muggy conditions. Uh, daytime highs, they start to climb too. So 93 Wednesday, 95 Thursday, 97 on Friday. That's the day where we're going to be near record heat and we have the humidity. So the heat index is going to be up near 100. I know a lot of people have outdoor plans on Friday. Friday is the day we have to watch for heat issues. Uh, and it's hard to believe. Yeah, we're in mid September and we're still talking about that. But uh, that is South Texas for you. Hey, really quickly, the clouds and radar. This is what's going on with Francine and we're starting to get a little better look at it as it gets a little bit closer to the coast. It's a little lopsided, but this is a strengthening storm and it will make landfall a little bit later today in Louisiana. Now on the back side of it, notice we're basically uh, rain free. Well, there is no rain once you get past the Texas coast. And then uh, other than a few very uh, light uh, clouds, or morning clouds, uh, we don't have much going on here. Uh, let's look at the tropical weather outlook and you know we've been talking a lot about Francine but there is more out there so as you go way out in the Atlantic there is a 80% chance of development with a system out there and then one just south of that 30% chance of development and then out in the Pacific you got an area with a 60% chance of development so yeah Francine is there but the the Atlantic and the tropics in general are still pretty active and you would expect that as we have reached the peak of hurricane season. Okay, let's look at the future cast. So Francine moves north, takes a lot of the rain with it. We're in a quiet weather pattern, I think, over the weekend. But I am going to watch some tropical moisture. That system that I just showed you in the Pacific, it moves north, and some of that moisture gets pulled into Texas as we get into Sunday and Monday. Does that mean good rain chances? Not really. I think it's just a small shot at some isolated showers and storms, uh, mainly late Sunday, early Monday. We're going to put in a 20% chance to account for it. Uh, but nothing to get too excited about. So we talked about the heat in the short term over the weekend we will be in the mid 90s. You see the rain chances there Sunday and Monday. Otherwise, this is uh, more of a summer like pattern than it is a fall like pattern. <laughs> unfortunately, hey, it's OK. What they say, they can put ice cubes in your little coffee things that you'll be drinking. <laughs> little PSLs. Little ice coffee. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Know. Go ahead and do it. All right, 554 <laughs> right now, 76 degrees outside. All right, coming up, we're going to tell you about this 106 year old woman, 106 years young, who was just sent home from hospice care for, get this, being too healthy. Check this out. We've got a Virginia woman it's not only celebrating over 100 years of life, she's also celebrating good health. Dorothy Southall turned 106 years old last week. Her birthday came just a year after she was discharged from the hospice because, get this, she was deemed 
too healthy, RJ, to meet the requirements. Love that right there. So wearing a tiara to mark the occasion, South Hall was surrounded by loved ones. You saw right there who gathers at the residential care home where she now lives to celebrate your 106 years on this live. Yes, 106 years young. When asked about what advice she would give to the younger generations, look, she just broke it down here. She said, quote, you've just got to go with it. I love it because, you know, people who do reach those ages, you ask them what's your secret. You got one person who'll say, drink it, Dr. Pepper or drinking beer or something. And it's always simple wisdom, but yes, I love it. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> San Antonio will never forget, though, right here. Special day. We got a special September 11th remembrance ceremony unique to Alamo City. Absolutely. We will follow that show coming up here in just a bit.